again. Once again, this is Wendy in the Island, and we're going to continue with our with our demonstration into the shoe bread and the Kana Balsam and the Mary and John or the Mariam Johannes or the Marijuana connection to the bread of the presence to the um, Aishans and to the holy to the holy offering. So. Here, when we go to the internet, so let's check out the internet for a moment, and mm, let's give thanks and praises. Now, right here, as you can see, if you go and look up on the internet, um, the shoe bread, and this is what we've done. We've looked up shoe bread, and there's thousands of um references to um shoe bread out there in various different dictionaries and on various different sites like even here is a connection with the Egyptian bread was called the shoe bread like the sacred bread that was used by the Israelites and the Hebrews in the Bible some connect that with something called Ormus and pyramids because of its conical shape down here they say that this was a type of fermented bread as you can see right there and some of the further references now we don't have the opportunity unfortunately to go through each of these references because I'm sure there'll be much more which could be found but we're going to give a little bit of a, ver a visual a visual um some of the visual uh, representations. Now, this is one site that we had saved from before, and perhaps you have been to this particular this particular website, right? And here's um, some references right here. And see, this is a this is a visual demonstration right there of um, an offering, the conical offering right there within the hands of uh, um, Sosstris the offering bread to Amun in the White Chapel at Karnak in the White Chapel at Karnak and here we have um, a triangular um, offering to Anubis that's based on an illustration in Sacred Science by R.A. Schwala that the Lubick the Lubix, the Lubix, right? And this is another demonstration of the conical, the conical shape right there. Now, we're going to make a direct demonstration, but let's uh, show you a little bit more of the conical shape. Some say it was bread. Some say it was white bread. Um, and uh, some even connected with gold also connected with gold. This is some of the utensils in the holy place that were used, some of the utensils there. And then we have um, gold, you know, and gold in the hieroglyphic or neb, neb, noob, some say noob, some say neb or nib, which is the hieroglyphic for gold. And we have this drawing that's um, based on one by W. Um, Rezinski, excuse me, from Ages in Chaos, from Ages in Chaos right here, which is, uh, you have many different elements that are depicted. But let's get to the beginning of this particular article. So here, this article is by one name, um, is by one name, uh, Barry Carter. Barry Carter. And there's some interesting, um, interesting references that are used in this particular article but in his first lecture the first Dallas lecture David Hudson talked about shoe bread and the conical shape of its depiction in Egyptian art which we have um, down here a couple of representations of this right here 48 is one and then if we go a little bit further we have this demonstration right there. Then as it's being offered right here to Anubis. But then we have it being offered right here by Sesostris. 
in the White Chapel at Karnak. And this is the chapel, the White Chapel right there at Karnak. And then we also have this interesting demonstration right here, where it's like some sort of a leaf. You can see some sort of a leaf is being is being offered um, in this particular um, depiction. And behind, behind this figure right here is um, an offering, another conical shape. Now, here's the description of the stella. This stella is found in a book by Alan H. Um, Gardiner and T. Eric uh, Pete, edited and completed by Jaroslav uh, uh, Kearney. The inscriptions of Sinai, and this is the 45th uh, memoir of the e Egypt Exploration Society from around 1955. And then it has this here that at the top is a horizontal line giving the titulary of um, uh, Amena Nemes the third, uh, the good God, the good God, or Tob, the Tob Ya. Obaya Tobia, which is an ancient name for Ethiopia, Lord of the two lands, Lord of might, King of Upper and Lower Egypt, Nemare, living forever, beloved of Hathor. Now below, the king is seen seated on the left, wearing the two feathers at the back of his cap and carrying the flail. So the two feathers right here at the back of his cap. As you can see, and he's carrying, and he's carrying the the flail, right? Now Hathor holds out to his nose, what we pointed out in her right hand, the emblems of life and dominion. So the emblems of life, which is some sort of a plant, and um, dominion, as well as dominion. In front of her are the words said by Hathor, or Chit Harui, I am giving the life, perpetuity, and health to thy nose for eternity. Now, the goddess holds in her left hand a round object whose nature is not obvious. Now, you see the round object is not really known exactly what this particular round object is right there. So they say that its nature is not obvious, probably a, a menat, like menat, the necklace. Behind her is the god's treasurer, Sebek Hotep, holding out in his right hand a conical loaf of bread. In front of him we read, in front of him we read, uh, said by the god's treasurer, Sebek Hotep, I bring to thee. Now, behind this figure, again, is another holding a papyrus roll in his left hand, in front of whom is said by the scribe, uh, dot, 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 this foreign country. So now that basically is a basic description of this particular hieroglyph or this particular stellar scene right here. So we have both this um, branch or leaf or green, it, it could be herb, or it could be a different type of herb, and here we have the conical offering, this might be the manat, and here this one is holding in his left hand, in his left hand, a scroll. Just to demonstrate right here, as well, we have this again, this particular picture right here, and also this, this is the conical shoe bread or offering, as well. And then if we go down here, we have another demonstration as well. This offering, you can see this offering right here. And we can see the offering right over here as well. All right, now this one right here, according to the inscriptions of Sinai, the description of this fella is from the 18th dynasty. So this is said to be an 18th dynasty. Um, Stella and the description is as follows it says above is the usual winged disc below it on the right Hatshepsu as king offers white bread to Anhor Sho or Anhor Shu and on the left is Thutmosis the third presents wine to Echit Harui or to Hathor 
Lady of the Turquoise. And they say date is year is year twenty. Is year twenty. Now we want you to focus on what's in what's what's in the hand, the offerings in the hand. Right? And this is another stellar here as well. And we can see it's so somewhat faded right here. But if we can tilt this and bring out some of the details, perhaps you can see some of the details right there. All right, and a further um, demonstration of, of offering, of offering as well in the hands. And we, we can even show you pipes. They are obvious smoking pipes with conical offerings and other hieroglyphic um, descriptions as well. Now, what's the biblical, what's the biblical connection to this? What is the biblical connection? Now, this particular article demonstrates here again is that Sothic triangle, generally adjacent to the Ankh, to the Ankh, you know, usually is connected with, to the Ankh, which is a symbol for life or living. And so, whatever this offering. Whatever this offering was, it was connected with an idea or a sense of life or living, and the words inscribed were towards health and prosperity and uh, life. Now, this is not a coincidence. It shouldn't be seen as just a mundane um, coincidence, what we have uh, demonstrated right here from ancient Egypt and its biblical now connection when we understand that Moses, Moshe, Musa, was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts and he was a man mighty in word and deed. So the context for the Bible is ancient Egypt. The context, in other words, we have to look at it within that ancient context of that world because much of the symbolisms in the Bible, and that which is more cryptic in the Bible, can be overstood or explained when we put it in the context of ancient Egypt. Now, this opening part right here is interesting. Now, we're going to touch on it, but we're going to give a little demonstration. For example, if we look at this right here. All right? Okay. If we look at this right here. Okay, we got this clear. This right here can be seen in a conical shape. It's an offering. You see the cone-shaped shoe bread. This is a demonstration of the cone-shaped shoe bread as well, which is the Aishin, so the Kana Bos, the, the Kana Bosom. The Kana Bosom. And it doesn't have to always be in a, in, in a triangular shape, but it can be in a more round shape as well. So we have demonstrations of the Kana Balsam. Now this will be offered of course in, in two hands as we see depicted let's just bring this down right here as we see depicted in ancient Egyptian art. This is a one hand. This is a one hand offering right here like this. A one hand offering. And then we have this over here the next picture which is a two-hand offering. Now, the biblical connection to this, can we find the biblical connection? Yes, we can. So let's begin this portion of the article. Again, let's go to the beginning. Just to give you a kind of a demonstration of the offering of the shoe bread, what we in Rastafari, we would call this the lambs. This would be considered the lamb's bread. And saying this would be the, the cone shaped lamb's bread. Yovas? Okay. So, okay. This is out of Age, Ages in Chaos by Emmanuel Velikovsky. Now, Ages in Chaos. Now, this one, you can't get new. You've got to find it in used bookstores. I think it was 1957. Now, this is from the first lecture by David uh, Hudson, where he talked about the shoe bread and the conical shape of its depiction in Egyptian art. 
he says that the book is was hard to find, at least when he's speaking on this. He says he thinks it was 1957 that it was published. Anyway, Emmanuel Velikovsky was trying to do a correlation between the writings in Egypt and Hebrew and the Hebrew Bible or the Hebrew Torah because he was Jewish and he was researching all the records that were in Egypt trying to find where they agreed with the biblical because the Bible doesn't date things well. The Egyptians were very methodical record keepers and they did date everything very specifically and that shoe bread was obviously not of flour but of silver or gold. So here's an interesting note where he said that the shoe bread was not of flour but of silver or gold. You understand? Of silver or gold. Now, I want to make a note right here that the silver or gold can also be a, um, a uh, figurative speech. Let's, let's understand this, but let's still just take the context that they're giving us right here. So now, it says that in the book of Exodus, it is said that the shoe bread was made by uh, Bezaliel, who was a goldsmith. Bezaliel is the man who made the Ark of the Covenant, or the Tabot, the Tabot, uh, the Tabot, or the Tabot Kidan. Made he also made the golden decorations for the tabernacle, the Dinquan, the Mishkan, and made you know made made the shoe bread. See, so he says right here, and made you know he was a goldsmith, and yet he made the bread of the presence of God. This is what um, David Hudson was saying in this in his first Dallas lecture, but the shoe bread wasn't called shoe bread then. So at this time it wasn't called shoe bread. The shoe bread was called at this early time it was called the bread of the presence of God. So remember before he was talking about being in the presence as the bread of the presence question. Okay. Anyway, we need the next slide. Now uh Barry Carter, whose article this is right here, he says further down, um this statement is not strictly true. The statement that uh, David Hudson was giving is not strictly true. The Bible speaks of Bezaliel as a fabricator in all manner of workmanship, not just the working of gold and silver. And then he gives us a quote right here from um, Exodus chapter 31. I mean, 31, 1 to 31 and uh, 11, and it says that the Lord spake to Moses, saying, See, I have called by my name Bezaliel, the son of Ori, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, Yehuda, Iuda, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones to set them and in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship and I behold I have given with him a holy Ab, the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Don and in the hearts of all that are wise hearted I have put wisdom so in the heart of all who are wise hearted I always saying he has put wisdom that they may make that I have commanded thee the tabernacle of the congregation, the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is there upon and all the furniture of the tabernacle, and the table and his furniture and the pure candlestick with all his of all his furniture and the altars of Aishans, or the altars of incense. Make a note of that. And the altar of incense. And the altar of burnt offering with all his furniture and the laver and his foot. And the cloths of service. The cloths, the clothing of service, the cloths of service. And the holy garments for Aaron, the priest, and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office. 
and the anointing oil. Make a note of that. And sweet incense for the holy holy place, or the sweet ashes, the sweet ashes for for the holy place, the sweet ashes for the holy place. Now, it goes on to say, according to all that I have commanded thee, they shall do. Now, Hudson goes on to say, just to just to get this a little bit of this into a little bit of basic context. He calls it the white bread. Now, what they say, they call it the white bread. Put a question mark there, right? And it is called gold in this. He actually has the Temple of Karnak records here of the plunder that was taken to Egypt from the Temple of Solomon. And here it, and here it all is. And here is the depictions of it, okay? That's good. Now, let's look at... These are supposed to be what was taken in the time of um, Rehoboam after the death of Solomon from Solomon's uh, temple. That these are the elements that are recorded by the Egyptians that were taken. Now, the drawing, as we mentioned already, was based on one by W. Uh, Wresinski from Ages in Chaos. All I need to draw attention to is see these little things that look like spiders right here. This is the hieroglyphic for gold. This right here is the hieroglyphic for gold. There, 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 mm, there, 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 pointing to the picture. So he's pointing in his lecture. He's pointing to this picture, to all the areas where he finds this particular hieroglyph right here, or neb, noob the hieroglyph for gold. And these first items are all gold, okay? Then down here, they got silver at the bottom, they got copper, but the more important items are the golden items. Here's the table, the golden tables, the golden vessels. Anyway, the menorah, even the lion's heads are here someplace, yay. Here's a lion's head. Anyway, if you read the Bible and you go through this list, that is recorded at the temple of Karnak, it's absolutely identical to what's recorded as being in the temple of Solomon. Right here is the shoe bread. Coincidentally, it's the elongated pyramidal shape or a conical shape. It doesn't look like a loaf of bread, does it? It's the symbol. Now, this is what we're saying. That even when we show the Aishans here, you understand? And we show this as a cone shape. It doesn't have to be in this particular shape. It could be in a more in a more round shape. You understand? But the point is, the point of it is that it's the symbol. You see, it's the symbol. You can even see the symbol right here. Some can see a, a triangular shape. Some can see a heart shape. You understand? Or it's like a bud. You understand? The bud shape. But the but the pyramidical shape can easily be ascribed by this particular example, this demonstration that we're giving right here. So let's get back to this. So right here is the showbread. Coincidentally, it's elongated pyramidal shape. It doesn't look like a loaf of bread, does it? It's the symbol, the same symbol I just showed you. It's called, they say, the white nourishment. Put a question mark next to white. You see, because of racism and because of white supremacy and the whole Eurocentric linear kind of um, calcified pineal gland thinking, uh, ones misconstrue the, the Eastern sense of this figurative. It has nothing to do with white people or Europeans or any of the racist misconceptions of this present world system. That's why we say put a question mark right here. The idea of white scripturally is to be clean. You understand? The white in that context as the white robes of righteousness as the knights, the black knights in shining armor wearing clean white clothing. So it's a symbol. But here it's called white gold. It's called white gold. Now, gold also is symbolic figurative language. Let's understand that even within the, the buds of the Anna Balsam.
sometimes we can have golden buds and it, and if it is and if it's clean even with the fire when we say clean if it is pure you understand it has that idea of the net or the whiteness to it so we are looking at symbolic or even metaphorical language here but let's go on it says what velikovsky said was they obviously meant silver so velikovsky now associated white gold with silver because they call it white gold now uh, David Hudson said in his lecture, no, they meant white gold. He's referring, once again, to the figurative language. So that, now just understand what's being said here just concerning this figurative language because it's important to decipher it in the context and from an Afro-Shemitic mind. That means from a black mind as we use slang, as we use metaphor even with Aishans and Herb and Ganja and Kaya and all these lamb's bread, these kind of figurative, symbolic language. And blacks are, black people are very good at this. You know, we are very good at, at developing language in a very unique way, using simple words to carry multiple levels of embedded meaning. But let's go on to with, with their article right here. So they say that they just meant what they said. It was white gold. So even though he's correcting Velikovsky, David Hudson, he's still falling short of the Afro-Shemitic or the black mind as when we now look at this from an Afro-Shemitic or black mind perspective, taking into context all that we have here is very easy, you understand, to to reconstruct, to make an Ethiopic reconstruction of this. So it was the bread of the presence of God that once a week the high priests of Melchizedek, he says Melchizedek here, were allowed to go behind the veil of the Holy of Holies and partake of the bread of the presence of God, Ha Elohim, or the Hashem. Buruku, and then more bread was set out for the next week as the offering to the God's feet, to the God's feet, another idea of symbolism right here in figurative language, or with the Ark of the Covenant. And they consumed this material on a weekly, it says on a weekly basis, they literally this was the era of the great prophets. It says this was the era of great prophets when literally God or Ha Elohim, the true God, the Hashem, the name, Yod Way, Yod He Wow He or Yahweh Yah. And if you understand the true meaning and the true reference of Yahweh, notice what's being said right here. And it says they consumed this material. They consumed it. In some way, they consumed it on a what weekly, maybe a Shabbatical, seven days, a Shabbatical, a weekly basis. And they literally, they says this was the era of the great prophets when literally God dwelt with his people. And we will add here, footnote this right here, when God dwelt within his people, they were conscious and these high priests could communicate with the animals or with the creation. They could telepathically know all things. It was the era of the great prophets in the Bible. Anyway, that's the stuff, and there it is, black and white. And there it is in the black and white, he says. Now, this is very, very interesting. Now, here, here's what we're talking about, this right here, that symbol for gold. You understand? This raised some sort of uh, almost like a, a jug or a vessel. Could it be like what Christ turned into wine, this this kind of a vessel right here, or it could be for purification. Here is the show bread. You understand? The shoe bread. You understand? And some of the other related um, symbols. So this is um, item is. Item 48 is referred to as gold shoe bread, according to Velikovsky in Velikovsky's Ages in Chaos. 
Now, Velikovsky in Ages of Chaos, he, he, he writes right here. Now, next to the altar was the table whereupon the shewbread was, according to 1 Kings 7, 48, and 2 Chronicles 4 and 19. The shewbread, obviously, not of flour, but of silver or gold. In the book of Exodus, according to the book of Exodus, it is said that shoe bread was made by Bezaliel, who was a goldsmith. His show bread is pictured on the bas relief of Karnak in the form of a cone or a conical shape. The cone in the seventh row, 138, bears the explanation white bread. This bread was of silver, they say, was of silver. The 30 cones of gold, 48, and the 24 cones of colored stone, uh, malachite stone, 169, identical in form with the silver cone, also represented, they say, the shoe bread or the show bread. And here we have some further um, demonstrations right here, as well as these two right here as well items 138 138 right here and item 169 at Karnak now Velikovsky clearly he he implies that some of the shoe bread was gold and some was silver he's implying here now Hudson also discussed the meaning of a similar object being presented right here to Anubis to Anubis or Anpu quote I think this next slide is one that just the picture says it all. It doesn't need any explanation. Once you understand this, the, quote, guardian of the secret, end quote, now pull it on over so that they can see the picture. The king offers him the, anab offers him the anabus, the digestive system, the white bread, that is the white nourishment. The picture tells the whole story. See, the black anibus represents the digestive system. Now, anibus here is being interpreted to represent the digestive system. And here he is, the king, with the white powder offering it to the digestive system. It's called the opener of the ways. It's called the keeper of of the secrets being offered to the digestive system is the interpretation of that. Now, the triangular offering is a fairly common motif we find in Egyptian art. Here is another image from the Alchemy Key by Stuart Nettleton. And this is another description right here of the cone, the cone uh, conical showbread or shoebread being offered. As we pointed to before, Sesostris uh, first offering shoe bread to Amun in the White Chapel at Karnak. So we get a, a good uh, picture of this, uh, a, visual, a visual image right here. Now, Stuart writes that this same shape is shown even earlier in the White Chapel at Karnak where the 12th dynasty pharaoh, Sesostris I, presents the conical shoe bread or the show bread to Amun, to Amun. Now, we can even continue to go forward into this article, and there's a lot much more information in this article and some of the other articles that we haven't even opened up just yet and haven't been able to get the opportunity to present. But what we want to do is to dovetail this with the main point of our particular lecture right here regarding the Ghana, regarding the Ghana, the Ghana Borsa, you know saying? regarding the holy herb as that holy offering that is even being referenced here in ancient Egypt, you know saying? in many different symbolic types and forms and even we can say the Egyptians, the ancients, added their own eschatology, their metaphysical or spiritual interpretation to what is written. So perhaps it should not be just understood but overstood in that metaphysical context 
as well as from a black mind where we can then understand why the variation in, in certain language description was like a slang. They were speaking their own ancient Egyptian form of Ebonics, so to speak. You understand? And it was embedded meanings that was peculiar to that people or peculiar to a certain mindset. So it's obvious that the ancient Israelites, even at the time of Solomon, also were familiar. You understand? Were familiar. Like this is, is from Sinai. And we know the role of Sinai, the conical loaf, on a cup, you understand, and the great God of the East. And we can put a lot of this together and understand that when the Bible says that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, it is very, it is, it is very clear that the interpretation of the tabernacle and its elements in order to be comprehended properly in the proper context must be seen from that particular um, perspective, as we have right here, once again, a demonstration of. So give thanks. We'll continue with another part of this, but we're going to pause for the cause and um, leave you with this particular um, image right here and the connection, once again, from the ancient hieroglyphs often was connected with life, that whatever this particular offering was, it was very much connected with life and was used as an offering, just as the shoe bread was used as an offering. And the first part of uh, David Hudson's lecture attempts to make a further connection that we have to uh, build on, you understand, in its proper scriptural context and contextualization. So if you go to even the images, and we meant to actually click here before some of the images that can be found of the shoe bread, you understand, both from its ancient Egyptian and its, uh, its Israelitish representations are very interesting and, and noteworthy as well. Here we have um, a, a, a set, a host of various images of the table of the shoe bread, of the show bread and, and the cakes right there. Here we have, we touched on this right here. This is more artistic um, um, representations of the shoe bread um, as well. And if you do your own research on it, hopefully you will find more and can make that basic connection for yourself. So, Shalom, Aras Tafari, this is Wendem Yadin, and more to, more to come. Uh, stay tuned, and Shalom.